Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about your first trade in FIFA 21 Ultimate Team. Right away when you get in the web app, how can you make some coins through trading those first couple days? We're gonna make a video today just talking about the trading side of things. Like how can you actually trade, sit on the market, bid, snipe, all that kind of stuff. I wanna kinda get your minds right for what you can do in that early time period with trading. Now, I also have talked about a lot in my previous video on how to start FIFA 21 Ultimate Team. This trading stuff probably should take place after you've done these SBCs right here. I know it seems, you know, weird to do an SBC right off the start of FIFA, but doing the hybrid nations and hybrid leagues is incredible value right off the start. And I really wouldn't start trading or looking to really move your coins too much unless you don't have any coins at the beginning and you need to make coins. I would make coins so that you can do these SBCs and maybe some of these trading methods can help you out with that today. So obviously when it's first day web app, what are people doing, right? They're trying to somehow build their coins. They're trying to start their FIFA ultimate teams. They can't play the game yet. Only the web app is out for that first day, that Thursday, supposedly September 30th of this month. Nobody can do anything but really do SBCs and start to assemble a team. They can't actually play the game. So a lot of the demand on the market is coming for SBCs. These SBCs in particular, or maybe some of the other basic SBCs that could be live. Now, hopefully this year, the SBCs are the exact same. If EA goes out of their way this year to make these packs either worse or untradeable, we're gonna have an issue because a lot of people are gonna be mad and then we're really gonna have to start trading on that web app time period instead of doing the SBCs because the SBCs are very, very profitable. But in terms of SBCs and what can you actually trade with early on in the game, it's all about non-rares in my opinion because non-rares, yes, they're getting packed from some of these um, you know, SBC packs that are being opened, but those are the ones that people always buy up for the SBCs as well, right? This was like the most popular way to trade last year with SBC fodder in the early couple days of the web app, Argentinian left backs. Again, why were Argentine left backs so expensive last year in the beginning? It was because of A, these SBCs right here, hybrid nations and hybrid leagues. You need a lot of good links. And these Argentines at left back, there were just not very many of me. As you can see, three to 4,000 coins almost every day, dipping with supply. But then of course, in that first week, everybody is on doing SBC. So this guy was expensive for like the first month almost, man. He didn't drop down to 1,000 coins until November as a non-rare, which is crazy in the game. But again, it just goes off of how you can complete those SBCs. The hybrid leagues and hybrid nations, you needed Argentine players because you had to have like 11 players from the same nationality and you have to get a high amount of chemistry as well. That's why you saw these guys stay high. How can you find players like Argentine left backs in FIFA 21, even though we don't have the full database yet? When we do have the full database, you'll be able to do this, but this is how you do it, right? Go into, onto FIFA 21, search through all the players, and we're basically gonna sort by version gold, gold rares and non-rares, and we're gonna go through the nations. We're gonna go through like the top five, right? Probably, I would say Argentina, uh, Netherlands, Brazil, maybe France, and maybe Spain would be the ones that I would look at. Uh, and then I would look at all the positions, especially outside backs and left mid, right mid, left wing, right wing, and basically look for rarity. Like I'm looking at Spanish left backs. There's a ton of Spanish left backs. What if I go about uh, Spanish right backs? What do we have here? Okay, still a lot. So maybe Spanish isn't the way to go. But when you're looking through this, what you want to find is a top five nation or top nine nation, to be exact, that does not have a lot of right backs, left backs, even center backs can be, um, you know, cards that are inflated a lot at the beginning of the game, especially if they have good links. You know, we have some Serie A center backs here. What were these guys going for at the beginning of the game? A thousand coins. Honestly, this is all you need, all right? In the web app time period to make coins as people are doing SBCs, all you need is for a non-rare card to be somewhere around 1,000 coins and above because you're going to be able to get that non-rare on bids late at night and even during the day. If you find the cards that nobody is thinking about, you're going to be able to get those bids through easier uh, as long as there's still some sort of demand for that card. 
Uh, it's all about the bids, honestly, and the snipes as well. You can be comparing price. What I would do is throw a bunch of cards on your transfer targets and just sort through those cards, compare price, because you can compare price in the early stage of the game because all of these cards, even a guy like a Ogbonna, is going to be very rare at the start of FIFA 21 in that first web app time frame. He's going to be a very rare card. So sorting through the nationalities and sorting through the leagues, right? Of course, we were we were been looking at, at nations. Look at leagues as well. Look at Premier League right backs, center backs, uh, Bundesliga, Serie A, Ligue 1. Maybe you need some Ligue 1 links for one of the, the SBCs for some reason. You know, maybe a league on right backs, Premier League right backs, Premier League left backs. That's something that is always inflated and always expensive to start off the game because people are always looking to build their squads, of course. This is something that I would honestly stay away from just because so many people are looking at these cards off the rip and so many people are trying to trade with them that it just makes the market with those cards very hard to make coins in. So that was that'd be tip number one that I would say is look at just non-rares and some rares um, that I have good links for some of these new SBCs. The advanced SBCs are going to be out at the start of the game. That is tip number one that I would do. I did a bunch of this last year. Any, any non-rares, man, you go out and you find a non-rare that works for you. That's the way to go. Find a card that you can get undercuts on. Even if you're making 100 coins or 200 coin profit per card, that's going to be good because you can replicate that, you can repeat that, and at least while you can't even get on the real game and there's no demand for the market to drive um, players' prices to go up, meta players, while there's no demand for that in the first day or so of FIFA 21, definitely look at some of these SBC fodder cards because that's all that people can do on the game is just transfer through and for and silt through and buy and do SBCs. So that is what I would trade with right away. Speaking of these SBCs though, this is another method that I would use. Going into these completed challenges, when these SBCs come out, day one on the web app, the advanced SBCs, sorting through the cheapest on Xbox or cheapest on PlayStation or PC, whatever console you're on, and looking through the top three squads that come up when it's the cheapest um, in terms of price, right? What happens is you will go out on the market and all of these cards, look, you need some Portuguese guys, right? Let's look at Portuguese um, nations, Portugal, where are they at? Okay, Portuguese right backs, left backs, or center backs. That's what I want to see. Portuguese left backs, all right, kind of rare. Um, probably not that expensive, though. Portuguese right backs, there's plenty of them. Portuguese center backs, how many do we have of those? A decent amount. Let's go back to the Portuguese left backs really quick, all right? Were any of these guys really expensive at the start of foot? Tiago Pinto, he's a decent car, to be honest. He was right, he was, he was cheap, man. He was actually pretty cheap. 75 rated, though. What about Antunes, maybe? Or uh, that was a transfer card, unfortunately. But this is the kind of stuff that you can look through when you find these SBCs, right? We're looking through the cheapest solutions, but actually once a, a squad, and you can kind of honestly, you can honestly snipe the SBC solution. You can sit here on the cheapest uh, SBC solution for a certain SBC and refresh the page. And when a new one pops up to the top, you can honestly click on that SBC because it's probably gonna be the cheapest at that point. But then you go onto the market, buy the players at the prices that they're stated for on Footbin because Footbin probably just updated, which is showing all those, all those prices, making it one of the cheapest SBCs. So those cards are probably on the market, right? So maybe this uh, Silva card is actually 600 coins like it says it is here. You go on the market, you see four or five or 600 coins, and then boom, you buy those up. And then 15, 20 minutes later, as people see this as the cheapest SBC solution, they go out and they buy this silver card up to a thousand coins. You sell all those at a thousand. Boom! You just made a couple thousand coins right there, just like that. It's all—it's—it's it's honestly like fluctuation trading with these SBC solutions. Now that's going to be like the day one type of thing that I would do. Now let's say this, right? Let's say you're going from day one into day two and day three. You only want to trade and you only want to spend your time grinding on the menus so much that first day. I mean, you don't want to continue to do that because if you're still trying to trade, you're going to miss some of the market movements into that EA access time period, day two, day three, day four of cards really starting to explode because people can actually get on the game. They can play games. They will get rewards. That Sunday squad battle rewards time frame is actually massive because people go out from there and buy up cards. That's a fantastic time to sell some of your meta players, like a guy like Joe Gomez from last year. We look at this card a lot, right? This is a starter team 
perfect starter team beast from FIFA 20. Look for cards like this when we get the full database out, which hopefully is soon. Um, but again, if you, if you look at this last year, he was 3,000 coins first day, boomed up to six, almost 7,000 coins the day of squad battle rewards on that Sunday. And then after that, on Monday, he was again 6K. And then his people started getting onto the game and opening up packs for the early access time frame. They started to get on the full game. This guy just tanked, right? But this is the type of card that you could look to buy on day one or even day two and look to sell on that first weekend right before the EA access period kind of ends and early access starts. Now that's on a low rated card, not a card that is very meta or somebody that a lot of people are gonna to wanna to actually use for their teams. Let's look at a guy like, maybe this is a bad example, but let's try looking at Salah, right? What did Salah do early on last year? Actually, this is gonna be a beautiful example, all right? Uh, let's roll it back to the beginning of time in FIFA Ultimate Team. This dude, first day, 251,000 coins. By that Sunday, he's 400K. Now, you might not have a lot of coins right away, but you can probably buy a guy like Joe Gomez, right? There's gonna be plenty of cards like this, this year that had the exact same movement in that first day, first three or four days. So honestly, your first trade in FIFA is just going to be trying to get enough coins to buy players like this that you can sell on Saturday, on Sunday, on Monday before that full game comes out with the early access. Now, don't get this confused, right? EA access comes out on the 1st of October. Early access doesn't come out until, what is it, like the 6th of October? three days before the full game release. So there's a five day window in there where we will see the market kind of rise with people getting on EA access. And that's when a time, that's a time where you actually want to be invested in meta cards that people are going to be buying for their teams. Now, of course, we don't have a ton of ratings out yet. I mean, we have some, uh, we go to the FIFA 21 ratings page right here, but now, a lot of the guys that are in this top 100 ratings, I know we've been getting a lot of lists and stuff like that, but the top 100 rating cards, I don't know if you're going to find any of these. If you're somebody who's on like 25, 30,000 coins, you've done the advanced SBCs, you've bought a few cards, nobody in this range is going to be really investable for you. You're going to be looking at some of the guys that are like maybe an, uh, an Allen St. Maximin or, you know, uh, some of these best dribblers or the fastest players, maybe an Adama Traore would be a card that you would look to in the first day or so. Maybe he's like three, 4,000 coins. He might be an exact same scenario as a Joe Gomez last year. Might even be more expensive, to be honest with you, which would be crazy. 66 shooting, but 96 pace. People are all about pace in the early game. Dan James could be somebody you look at. Vinicius could be somebody that you look at. Ismaili Asar could be another good uh, person that you would buy first two days, maybe he's two to three thousand coins. He explodes up to seven or eight k after you know the squad battle rewards on Sunday, and un until basically those those first two days. Again, if we look at a lot of these cards from last year, um, like we were just looking at Joe Gomez, right? It's all about that first day or two time frame, that first Thursday or Friday, getting on the web app, getting on EA access, and getting some of those buys in and watching the market go up from there as people start to buy their teams on the EA access. So this should happen on all consoles this year. Of course, on PC, you have probably a little bit less of a market rise just because there's not as many people on that market. But that's kind of how I would advise you guys to get started and what your first trades should be on FIFA 21. Again, first things that I would do, right? Trade with the SBC solutions with the advanced SBCs that come out day one that everybody's doing to try to raise some coins like we're talking about. I think those SBCs are great to do, by the way. Yes, it's a bit of risk, but you're getting some big time packs back. So from there, you maybe you get some more coins after doing the SBCs. You go out and you start to find some players that you want to buy that will rise in the next couple of days. And maybe while you're waiting for those investments to rise, you can continue to trade to overnight flip. There will be cards that fluctuate daily as they continue to rise up. Some of those meta cards, you'll be able to trade with on the daily too. Let's say you buy 50,000 coins worth of that SAR right wing card, right? Let's say you buy SAR for, you know, 3,000 coins a pop and you've got, let's say you've got 20 of them or something like that on your transfer list. You're all in on SAR, but then you've got, you know, 10 or 15K liquid. I want to go all in, all right? I would keep a little bit liquid just to continue to trade with because you still might find a guy like, uh, who's, who's another good example? Another low rated gold card that will fluctuate like Inaki Williams might be a little bit expensive, but maybe you find another, another rated low, low rated gold card that you can just trade and flip with because cards are honestly, 
Um, they kind of get lower in the evenings, overnight UK time, then everybody gets up and gets on the game and cards kind of rise. And then, you know, maybe they come back down in terms of what's going to happen for 6 p.m. content. We saw a lot of people that would panic sell this year for 6 p.m. content. So those would be kind of some movements that I would expect in the first couple of days. And again, we're just waiting for that web app to come out. It's going to be a fun time when it does, and I'm ready to start that grind with you dudes. But if you have any questions, please drop them down below. I know that with this stuff, I've kind of talked about some of this before, but I just wanted to mention kind of like your attack, your plan of attack and what you can do right away in those first day, two days, three days on the web app in FIFA 21 Ultimate Team, your first trade of FIFA 21. Again, if you enjoyed it, smash the thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's been Nate, the food accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.